Uh, we started the Avian and Exotic Service. Uh, groundwork for it started in uh, July of 2015. We officially opened September 9th. Um, so we, we worked for a few months to get everything together. Um, we opened in September. Right now we see appointments from 1 to our last appointment is 3.30 um, and they're half an hour appointment blocks Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Any member of the community can, can bring their companion exotics and avian patients here. We here will pretty much see any avian species now. I see wildlife in my capacity at the Raptor Center, but I will see anything that's companion through this service. So this is Bob, a 20-year-old king snake. We do see snakes, but only the non-venomous variety. And Bob here, being a king snake, is indeed non-venomous. So we can tell you straight off the bat, the copper is not super thrilled to be here. And specifically because of bearded dragons. Yeah, indeed you don't like that. Their chin here, they have the ability to change the color. And the darker that is, the more grumpy he is. Hedgehogs are on the short list of un unfun animals to examine. Them, turtles, and ferrets. Yes, you turtles and ferrets aren't fun to examine because you little guys can just decide you don't want to be examined. And ferrets, well, they just wiggle constantly. It's important to understand that we are not an avian and exotic only practice. We're part of the, the Auburn University Veterinary Clinic, which is commonly called our community practice. So we do have our canine and feline patients coming in through the same area. So it's important to keep all of our patients in a cage of some sort. Um, not only one for our ability to control them and make sure that they're not getting into places they don't need to go. That lobby has like a 20 foot ceiling, so if we have a flighted bird that gets up top, it could be a difficult process getting that bird down. Um, but more importantly for their safety, as we were sitting in the lobby, there was a bird dog that was very interested in Chuck, but fortunately Chuck was well protected in his cage. And you can fully extend them. Some birds do get a little grumpy when you do handle their wings if they're not used to it. Um, in the case of Chuck, he is used to us poking and prodding everything but you can palpate them just like you would a raptor. Um, when we do feather trims, wing trims, uh, you want to trim their primaries. The school's always been interested in adding uh, avian and exotic service. Uh, part of when I was hired was I, I worked both at the raptor center and here, uh, and part of what I wanted to do, I came through as a student uh, and never had, I had an interest in avian exotic medicine, but wasn't able to, to follow that interest here at all when I had to go to other schools uh, to get that exposure, so it's always been kind of a, a point in the back of my head that I wanted to come back and address that problem. So when I came in, that was one thing that I wanted to do was to start this service so that one, we can provide the service to the, the clients in the community, but two, to give the students the opportunity uh, to get that education if they're interested in it.